John with RipeWave Express back again with Denon's latest AV receiver, the AVR6800H, which was introduced into the market just under $3,500. And for this video, we're going to take a look at the built-in Odyssey calibration versus the Dirac calibration and see how they're different by measuring them. And of course, in our prior video, we actually went and set this all up. This series, we've covered a lot of ground already. This is really the fourth installment, if, if you include the introduction of Dirac base control for these Denon and Marantz receivers. There are multiple options out there. This built-in Odyssey is one of the Odyssey options. Of course, you have the editor, which you can get and do a little bit more control with for just $20, but then they have the multi EQX, which we have not covered yet, but it's coming soon and a lot of you are writing in uh, for the long version of this video about that calibration tool and how you can do much more with it and how it's closer to the Dirac Live calibration. But Dirac Live is available in multiple options. You know, the standard one does cost you some money. You can get the base control feature now for single or multi-sub. Of course, go back and look at those videos if you want to learn more about them. They're active room treatment isn't available yet for any of the Denon and Marantz models. So we'll keep our eyes open. So what do we do after calibrating these with Odyssey, with Dirac Live and Dirac Live with base control, we did hook up a UMIC one to REW and we got this hooked up uh, to generate these response curves. And first we looked at it just with everything off. So whether you have it in our Dirac mode or Odyssey mode, uh, but don't have any filters turned on, these are the plots you get. Here we're seeing uh, one in green, which is Dirac, and the purple one is Odyssey. And you can see these are just about the same, although the Odyssey seems to dip down at 34.1 Hertz. Now, if you go in and run Odyssey, this is the response that we got. We found this was interesting because it has this not dip at 34.1 anymore, but now something around 70 hertz uh, that we're a little concerned about uh, for this calibration. Of course, if you have the full multi EQX, uh, might be able to take care of that. Now, we also looked at the effects of turning on the Odyssey Dynamic EQ. So this highlighted plot here shows the effects here and it does alter the response curve here. Now, the whole point of dynamic EQ is when you're not running at reference levels, uh, you're low either above or below, it's compensating for that in boosting either the treble or the bass. Uh, and here we can see the effects of non-reference level playing on the curve. And this definitely uh, does have a result here. Now on to what we saw with Dirac Live. And we are looking at this plot, the orange or reddish plot here, which is the top, appears to be on the top here, that's standard Dirac Live. Uh, that's run. We didn't alter the target curve when we ran this. And then we added in Dirac Live base management. And that's just setting the crossovers to, uh, based off of what Dirac is really recommending there. And that's the green plot. And this seemed to be underperforming here. It, it really dropped down uh, between the uh, lower ranges of you know, 10 hertz to up to 80 hertz. And then it seemed to recover and it was seemed to be okay more on the upper end. But if you look at the rack live with base control, this was the best plot that we saw. Uh, nice and even uh, on the uh, chart here from 20 to 100 hertz really evened out with our multiple subs. We are running a 9.2.4 configuration. So two large 18 inch subwoofers, one at the front of the room, one at the back of the room. And with Dirac Live Base Control, you're able to do all the phase corrections or the software does it for you, the phase corrections and um, using the impulse response uh, capabilities of Dirac Live. Now, if we compare the Dirac live responses and then bring in Odyssey and superimpose that to the same chart. You can see that Dirac is generally doing better than Odyssey in this circumstance. Let's take a look at it with just Dirac live 
base control versus Odyssey, and clearly a much better looking response. Now our ears were telling us that Dirac was a lot more clear and articulate. Uh, while we thought that the Odyssey was lively and was very pleasant, and, and I'm not gonna take away from it, it sounding good, but if you give it some critical listening, uh, it was a little muffled, right? And of course, I'm being very critical at this moment. It wasn't bad. But compared to the Dirac Live with bass control turned on, of course, you're going to say, yes, you spend a lot more money. But I'm showing you if you do spend the extra money, you do get better results. The question which will remain here is, will Odyssey EQX, which is only $200, uh, equal or better that of what we're paying for Dirac Live? That is the question, and that's what we're going to come back with on this series. Now, we, one thing we thought was Odyssey did seem to have a little more oomph on the bass side, so we decided to raise up the bass on the Dirac. The default is 1.5 dBs, bringing it up to 4 dBs. Also listen to it at 10 dBs. And this is simply raising that up with a standard Dirac um, bar here that adjusts the target curve. And when we plotted this out, we did see the differences here between 1.5 uh, and 4 and 10. So the 4 we thought sounded the best. That's the purple plot here. And we can definitely see a little boost here. But when you try to do 10, we thought that was too much there. And you can see relative to the higher notes, it was much higher. I do say you got to be careful. Sometimes too much is too much. Uh, and when we loaded in a Harman target curve, and that was using the import of a text file that we found. And we could do this for 4 to 10 uh, dB. So we did the same measurements at uh, the same increases at 4 and 10. And when we applied these, we noticed that Harman curve, what we felt sounded better, but also looked better on the chart here. We didn't have that same large bump that we saw on the Dirac Live adjusted one. So that Dirac Live adjusted one is the purple plot versus the green line for the Harman curve. And the same thing as if we did it for 10 dBs versus four. So overall, we felt both corrections did help the uh, experience for the user. Dirac Live gave a noticeable improvement and with bass control, certainly much more articulate, a lot better. And then we're gonna come back with multi EQX and see if we can get as good as Dirac Live or better. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell notification so you're informed when the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.